Hi, this is Jeff Ackerman from the Colorado School of Mines Mechanical Engineering Department. Uh, since we all have to move our classes online, I found a pretty good workflow on how to record a lecture or meeting via Zoom, and then without any editing, going ahead and sharing that video with your students uh, by sharing a link uh, through a online storage software like Dropbox, OneDrive, or Google Drive, um, or even YouTube if you prefer. So I'll show you a couple different options. One. I'm going to go and log into Zoom, sign in, I'm already signed in, so I'm just going to go to host a meeting up here, go to video on. It's going to start a Zoom session. All right, join with computer audio. The default is to start Zoom while recording, um, but you may not be set up to record your lecture immediately, and you may need a second. And that's all you, all you have to do is stop recording down here under more, stop recording. All right. Now, when you're ready to start recording, uh, a couple options. You can use the webcam, enter full screen, and then I've got this webcam right here. This is a 1080p Logitech webcam, which is pretty nice, but the quality, the lighting aren't that great right now uh, on this particular computer in this room, but uh, it is definitely an option if you want to do webcam and record from there. Uh, what I'm going to show you is how to share your screen, so you can do a mix of webcam, audio, and screen share. So you click on share screen right there. We're just gonna click on sharing our overall desktop screen and then down here, click share. All right, so I'm sharing my screen. Uh, I can see my webcam up there that I can move around. This green border around the outside means I'm sharing my screen, but I'm not recording. Uh, so I'm gonna get set up and then I'm gonna start recording. So you can move this around, resize it, whatever works for your particular lecture setup. And so let's go ahead and start recording now. Um, so up here under more, all you do is mouse up there, go to more, and I can either record on this computer locally and then share it with a cloud storage system, uh, or I can record to the cloud. Recording to the cloud is kind of cool because it'll create a link automatically you can share with your students. The downside, taking a look over here, is that there isn't a lot of storage space built into Zoom, even for a pro account, only one gigabyte per user, which isn't going to be a lot of video. It might be okay for a little bit of video, um, but if you need to record a lot of lectures, that you could run into that limit pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is show you how to record on this computer and then share that file uh, it, however you prefer with your students. So let's start. There we go. I'm recording. I can tell right here that I'm recording. And I'm ready to navigate to different websites. Um, I can do some coding in Arduino and MATLAB. I can do some CAD, uh, whatever you need to do. Um, a lot of you will be using PowerPoint. So I pulled up a lecture from a while back. I used a machine design. And this was on failures due to static loading. Let's see. And then I go down to an example. And I had this set up on a tablet where I could just go ahead and write my notes right away. Um, and it's a pretty effective way to deliver the content. Uh, but whatever works for you guys, whatever you wanna, however you want to deliver your lectures, um, once you're done, you go up here, we're going to stop recording, or, or the hotkey is Alt-R. All right, and then I'm going to stop sharing my screen and end the meeting. What that's going to do, once I end the meeting, is transcribe the video, and then I can use that video, stored locally, and upload it to a cloud storage system like Dropbox, OneDrive, or Google Drive. Um, so it should pop up with a window. It just appeared down there. And I'm going to specify where I want that video stored. So I'm going to go over here. I made a folder on my desktop called test recording. Save it right there. It pops up. And I see I've got a couple different files here. The only ones I care about are these ones at the bottom. Zoom underscore zero, zoom underscore one. Zoom underscore zero is the default recording video. Um, that's when I stopped it after 14 seconds to get set up so that I could then record uh, using Zoom 1, which is the longer file. So this is my lecture file. Let's take a look. There we go. I'm recording. I can tell right here that I'm recording. And I'm ready to navigate to different websites. Um, I can do... All right, I'm going to go ahead and mute that. Let's just move through the video. The quality looks pretty good. I'm just going to assume you're going to do one take without editing because that's ideal. Um, but uh, So we're just going to show you the basic framework here uh, if you want to do it that way. All right, so that looks good. So what I'm gonna do now is upload this video onto a couple of cloud storage systems. So I'm gonna show you Dropbox, OneDrive, and Google Drive. 
All right, so for Dropbox, I'm just gonna load the folder over. Just drag and drop works. It's now uploading down here. And once it's uploaded, I can go ahead and refresh the page. Looks like it's almost there. And there it appears. All right, so we click on share right there. And then down here, I click create link. Once Dropbox creates the link, you can click copy link. And now the link is copied, ready to share with your students. They can directly watch the video. I'm gonna show you what it would look like with your if your students open that link. So I'm gonna create a, a new window where I am not logged in. Copy paste that link. And this is how it looks to anybody. Note how I'm not logged in right there. And so anyone that has this link will be able to view this. There we go, I'm recording. I can tell right here that I'm recording. And I'm ready to navigate. All right, so that's how you do it in Dropbox. Um, and students can also download the video as well. But again, you don't need any sign in. Uh, this will just work right off the gate, right out of the gate if you send them that link. All right, now that we've tried that, let's show you OneDrive just in case you have a slightly different uh, cloud backup setup. Drag that. We're uploading. And should be ready here in a second. And there we go. And click on share link right there. And I can click on copy link down here, just like it did for Dropbox. And there it is. Now let's go try the same thing. I'm gonna to go to my window where I was not logged in. See what it will look like if you send this to your students, even if they're not logged in. All right, here we go. I'm recording. I can tell right here. There we go. Very similar format. You can see the video right away and even download it. It's going to be very similar in Google Drive. Let me just show you that really quickly. All right, so I'm uploading. And there's my video right there. In Google Drive, all you have to do is right click get shareable link, or you can click that button right up there. All right, link sharing turned on. Just make sure, there we go. Got it. And copy that link over, let's see what it will look like. All right, so Google Drive is currently processing the video, but you can still go ahead and download it. When it's fully processed, you'll be able to view it from the browser. websites. Um, I can do some coding in Arduino and MATLAB. All right, so that's working well too. All right, so that's how you use any of these cloud backup systems, Dropbox, OneDrive, or Google Drive, to readily share a video with your students by just sharing them the link. You can also store a lot on here. Most of these services have anywhere from five gigabytes up to a terabyte of storage space, so you can record a lot of video. Let me also show you how to do YouTube really quickly. Uh, it's not too hard. Uh, as long as you have a YouTube account, all you do is click on your icon at the top right. Then you go down to YouTube Studio. All right. And then at the top right, there's this Create button. I'm going to click Upload Video. And I'm also going to drag the video in right there. It's uploading. All right. Test Lecture, let's call it. Uh, you can add a description as you'd like. Um, as it's processing the video, we can see it's processing the background. We can still keep going. It'll process automatically, um, but this is a pretty short video, so it should be pretty quick. Uh, it even gives us a link right there, right off the bat. When it's fully processed, you can use that. All the defaults here should be fine. You can just go ahead and click next. It will ask you if it's made for kids or not. Um, and I believe this one would qualify for that. So let's go ahead and just check yes. You can complete this step after the definition, standard definition of video has been processed. All right, so we just have to wait here for this video to be processed, which it should be done in just a second. And then we're pretty much ready to go. We can share that YouTube video link without too much issue. All right, so just showing you the rest of this. Uh, if you make your video public, that means anyone on YouTube can see it and can search for it. If you make your video unlisted, that means only people with a link can view it. Um, so that's a great way to share with your students if you don't want to remain public for everyone. 
Um, so that's up to you. Don't, I wouldn't recommend using private because private, you have to give permission on an individual basis. Um, so that's not a great way to share the video. I'd recommend unlisted if you just want to share the link or just keep it public if you want people to be able to, everyone to be able to see it. And the defaults otherwise are good. Let's save it. Oh, I need to click one of these. Let's do unlisted just for testing purposes. There we go. That means anyone with a link can view this. And there we go, there's our video. We've got our video link, I can click copy. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Again, not logged in here. If you just watch this YouTube link, oh, I'm recording, I can tell Ray. And we've got here. our YouTube video yeah, set up recording. here. Now the quality is a little bit low. YouTube generally improves the quality uh, as it finishes the whole processing of the video. So it may take a little while to improve the quality, um, but that's how you do it on YouTube. All right. So there we go. I showed you how to record a video or meeting via Zoom. You can share it readily on Dropbox, OneDrive, or Google Drive by just sharing that link with your students. You can also upload it to YouTube without too much issue. So I hope that video was helpful to give you a basic framework for how to record your screen on Zoom and share it with your students. And good luck as you transition online because uh, we're all doing it on a pretty short time frame. Um, but it's really not too bad. So hope that was helpful and good luck. I'll see you around. Let me know if you have any questions.